Okay, we're gonna start by creating some CAD data. We're just going to create a two-point line for now and go through some of the picking concepts used in 12D. As I said in the previous video, we need to set up the CAD control bar with the appropriate properties before we create the line. So I'll bring the CAD control bar down into the view space. Now when designers are conducting real world projects, they'll wanna make sure that all of the data has the correct properties. This is the name, color, line style, and weight that the data has. As long as these properties are consistent across all projects throughout a company, you'll be able to identify the data reliably, whether it's your project or someone else's. And you'll also be able to streamline processes across the company. Companies set up naming conventions for their data so that everything is consistent. If we select the names N icon next to the first field on the CAD control bar, we get a list of categories for different types of data. Within, for example, the design category, there are again more categories for roads, bridges, stormwater, and so on. So say for example, under the roads category, these are the road features. And in the square brackets are the names that you would be expected to assign to these features in your project. So for example, the road lip of curb should be named KL, back of curb should be named KB, and so on. Now we're just drawing a two point line at this stage, not getting into any road features just yet. So if we expand the general category, and then lines, we have an option there, CAD line, which suits the element we'll be creating. So double click on CAD line, and you'll see that the fields in the CAD control bar have been populated. So when we create the two point line, it will automatically be named line, be assigned to the model CAD. I'll explain more about models once we create the line. The line will have a white color. It will not be assigned a specific Z value. The line style is one, which is just a continuous line type. It will have a default weight and it will be tinnable, which means it can be used to create surfaces. So the CAD control bar is set up and now what we need to do is pick the relevant CAD feature that we want to run. So we can either select CAD line two points, or we can use the CAD toolbar, which is here on the left side of the workspace. I'll pull that out into the view space as well. Whether you use the menus or the toolbars is up to you, uh, but I'll use the toolbar so I'll left click and hold on the CAD line option, which is the third one across. Then we're presented with various different types of CAD lines we can create. I'll release my click on the first option, which is two points. Now when using CAD features in 12D, we'll be keeping a close eye on the screen message box, which is located directly below the view tabs. This message box will guide us through the CAD drafting process letting us know where we are in the current process and what we're expected to pick at each moment. So at the moment, when I hover over the plan view, the screen message box is telling me CAD line two positions, then in the square brackets, pick first position. So I'll just click in the view tabs to open view number one and conduct my work in there. So I'll left click somewhere in the plan view, and it doesn't matter exactly where, and you'll see a circle pop up. This is the cursor snap, which snaps to where we picked in the view. If we then select the middle mouse button or click on the mouse track wheel, this will accept the pick location. This clicking of the track wheel to accept does take a little bit of getting used to, but it becomes second nature before you know it. So we place the first point of our two point line, then we'll move the cursor to where we wanna place the second point, and again, left click, then middle mouse click to accept. Alternatively, you can right click to bring up the pick operations panel, then select accept to place the second point. But I'd recommend getting used to the middle mouse track wheel click. With that second point placed, the line is created and you'll notice that it has been created with the color that we set in the CAD control bar.
Now you can see in the screen message box at the bottom of the screen that we are still operating the CAD line two positions feature. If we want to exit out of this feature, we can just press escape. And now the screen message box is empty, which means we aren't running any feature. So what we've created here is a line. The CAD element we have created is called a string, which is made up of vertices and segments. In this case, we have a string which contains two vertices that are linked together by a segment. However, a string could be made up of any number of vertices and segments. A string could even be just a single vertex with no segment. Now you notice when we left click in the plan view, or even try to click the line that we've just created, that we can't. You can only select data in the project when you've told 12D what you want to do with that data. So you have to be running some feature. When you just want to select data to determine its properties or look at any other information, the most common feature to run is the string inquire. You can select the string inquire feature a few ways. The first is through strings inquire on the main menu, or by holding down the measure edits icon on the options toolbar and selecting the first option, string inquire. Well, by far the easiest way is to select the hotkey F2, which because this feature is so common has been linked directly to the string inquire feature. This will open the string inquire panel and also begin the string inquire feature. So now we can left click to pick either the cursor location again or even the string itself. And this is where we can start talking about snaps. So snaps dictate what data you can select and they are controlled by the snaps toolbar, which has the name H. I'll drag that one into the view space. So the snap that has so far allowed us to pick the cursor location is the C, cursor snap, which produces a circular snap shape as we've seen. Some other important snaps are the P, point snap, which enables you to select vertices. So I'll pick near the end of the string. And you can see the first line of the information reported in the table there is point snap. So we know we've picked the vertex at the end of the string. You can also see various other information about this string in this info panel, like the name, model, color, and even the time the string was created. The snap shape that corresponds to a vertex is a diamond, so this is the quick way of knowing in the plan view that we've picked a vertex. The next snap, L for line snap, enables us to pick segments. I'll pick something on the line, but not close to either of the ends. And you can see the first line of the information reported in the table is line snap. So we know we've picked a segment. And that snap shape is a square. I won't go through every snap. Uh, these you'll get to know in time. Uh, but the last one I will show you is the I info snap. This snap being toggled on is the reason we get the information panel after we pick the data. So if I toggle this snap off, then pick the data, you'll see we can pick the data, but the information panel hasn't shown up. So whether you want that on depends on what you're doing and whether that info panel is going to get in your way more than it's going to be useful for you. So it's really personal preference, but I like to keep it on. I'll just finish on the string inquire panel because we're finished with that. And the last thing to mention is that data is stored in a 12D model project in what are called models. You can have an unlimited number of models in a project. For example, we've just created this two point line in a model called CAD. And any of your views at any time can display any number of these models that you require. We can add or remove models to or from a view by using these plus and minus icons on the specific views toolbar. So I'll select the minus icon on plan view one and you'll see all of the models which are currently on in this view, which at the moment is just this CAD model we created. If we double click that CAD model to remove it from the view, you'll see the view is now empty. Then we can click the plus icon and see a list of all the models that are available to be added to this view. And we can again double click the CAD model and the data in that CAD model will be added to the view. It's also useful to know how to delete data. 
So let's delete this string by selecting strings delete. That will open the strings delete panel, beginning the string delete feature. And all we need to do is left click on the string, then middle mouse click to accept, and the string will be deleted. We can then select finish on the strings delete panel to exit out of this delete feature. And I'll just move my toolbars and control bars back to where they started.